everyone and welcome to episode eight of the Heart Space podcast with myself, Jasmine, and my beautiful co-host, Alicia. Hi, guys. So today's episode is a reshoot because we had um, a few technical difficulties with the last time we, we tried to shoot this particular episode where we are going to be talking about the sisterhood and this wonderful movement of women congregating together that has come from the freedom movements around the world and you know I think it's such an important and beautiful relationship that people are creating and starting with the people that they're congregating within the the freedom movement because you know we need that support too we need um to have that that um the women come together and hold space for one another, you know, because we're Mm -hmm. so used to being pitted against each other. And I think there's been the shift in not only consciousness, but in the relationships we have with one another, where we're, we're coming together now and we're healing and we're inspiring one another and we're rooting for each other and it's genuine and it's happened organically. Wouldn't you say, sis? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, I don't know, it's just like magic. <laughs> That's how I describe it. Um, I guess um, from my experience, like I've never had such a wonderful group of girls, women in my life that literally um, come together with no judgment mm. and literally embrace one another and who who each other are um and it's only really happened for me since 2020 you know and 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 a lot of them I've met are online (laughs) they're my online soul sisters and um you know it because we're back in 2020 we were in lockdown weren't we so we couldn't go anywhere Mm. and um you know a lot of like-minded individuals took to social media and so like for me when I would see someone that was on the same uh, another woman that was on the same bandwagon as me I'm like who are you and I'm like hmm, and you <laughs> and then we just start talking away and you know when you're on the same journey and you're like-minded you just come together but there's just been a huge shift though there's no what I see is there's no jealousy, there's no envy, yeah, there's no cool. two-faced bitchiness, which is just so, that's what I grew up with, man. Mm. Like in school, I was outcasted by the popular crowd, you know. I was, I never had that, you know, real sisterhood. I have never really felt accepted by women. And then like, you know, 2020 comes along and, you know, I'm speaking it out about everything that's going on they're speaking out about everything that's going on it's like holy shit you are my tribal <laughs> soul sisters uh, and the, so it, the, the programming played a big part in that too in terms of the relationships we see on tv like especially in reality tv shows where it's a lot of cattiness and gossip and bitchiness whereas that kind of shifted in 2020 because we're fighting for a greater cause. We're real. We're realizing there's a bigger enemy, you know, that is trying to infiltrate us and um, just take over our lives with this whole new world order agenda. And that's, I think, what has raised a lot of what I would call warrior women, like yourself, like myself. We've we've um, touched base with we've got to mention our sister Elena who I started the podcast with she's been such a big voice uh, on social media um we've got Carleen Hedeorder there's so many here in New Zealand we've had Karen Brewer and yeah. you know I just want to mention these women because they have been speaking out so bravely and they've been ridiculed and oh, yeah. they have been you know they've put their their whole livelihoods are have been put at stake for speaking out about what they what they have been and exposing the Freemasons and the child trafficking. And yeah. you know, I just want to take my hat off to these women and honor them today on this episode because, you know, this watching them speak out gave me the courage to speak out essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to give it to Carleen. Um 
and I, I've had the, you know, I've met her quite a few times and, um, you know, she's just, she's just amazing. She really is. Like the, she's literally put her, her life on hold mm. and just taken this on as her project um, for the greater good to expose what's really going on with the child trafficking um, and I'm going to put it in here, the satanic ritual abuse yeah. that is happening, that is not a conspiracy. And she's, you know, she has been slammed left, right and centre, but she has honestly, she's just got that warrior energy that she's not going to bow down for nobody. She's going to do this to the, like, you know, till this shit comes out into mainstream. She's exposing. And I, uh, yeah, I just want to, I want to, I want, if anyone's watching this, then you need to like tap into Carleen, go have a look if you don't know about this too much because it's all there. She exposes it all and um, she's a real one. Absolutely. Yeah. She's done so much work in exposing it. And um, I think I've had the privilege of interviewing her before and her story is amazing because she's actually been through um, a case where child trafficking is involved with some people that are, um, that we're staying with her. So if you haven't already, go check out my interview with her on the Awakening with Jazz page. Um, if you want to learn more about her story, it's all there. But another thing that has happened during this whole freedom movement is not only the sisterhood, but we have a brotherhood that has been established too. And mm. we've, we've built these wonderful relationship with these men that are you know, that have our back essentially too. Um, and, yeah. you know, they're protecting the women. They're, they're there um, at the rallies and they're speaking out. They're creating their own little movements within this group too. And yeah. it's just been a beautiful time with these different groups that are emerging out of this whole thing. Yeah. Well, they're essentially for so long now, and I would say hundreds, thousands of years, like it's been um, – that feminine energy has been pushed down and the masculine energy has arisen and that's based on ego. Mm. But what I've seen within the movement um, here with the brothers is that they've allowed, there's, there's been an allowance of feminine energy to rise because it's got such a different energy approach um, to everything that's going on, the exposure, um, how the message is delivered and everything like that. So, and then they've sat there and they've backed us. So there's a beautiful balance that is coming between the masculine and the feminine energy. Um, and, you know, I've met some amazing um, men on this journey. So, and I call them, the, they're my brothers, you know, we are not related by blood, but they are, we are on a soul level, if you know what I mean. And it's the same with the woman. So, yeah, just embracing both of those energies. Everyone's doing their part. That Everyone is exactly where they are meant to be in this awakening journey and doing exactly as, you know, their purpose, what they're meant to be doing. So it's it's really, um, it's a real beautiful balance that has come about um, mm -hmm. in this movement. Because I've noticed in the uh, third dimension or third density, which is that, matrix system it's not like that it's oh. not like that at all. we're still you know there's just you see you see the imbalance completely it's a whole different frequency really too yeah yeah I for awakened and i don't mean to like put ourselves on a pedestal but i feel like once you've awoken and you've stepped out of that system you've got a whole different viewpoint you see your relationships in a different light you see um like your passion and your careers shift there's like this whole transformation happening within a lot of people that have woken up because like I always say, you're not only awakening to the corruption that is taking place around the world, you're waking up to your true identity, you know, and how powerful you truly are. And throughout like our our childhood and through the indoctrination of schooling we've been taught to look outside ourselves and again it's all about going back within and trusting who you are and trusting your inner voice because it it, it does it will steer you right every single time that in a compass and I think when we've forged these relationships with these women and we've had this safe space where we can heal and you know, not feel judged, it's allowed for us to step into our power even more and know that we're being held by this, you know, beautiful feminine yeah. energy. And when 
and when again not being judged I think that's the biggest thing especially when you put yourself out there you're always scared of being judged yeah. um, that's why I held back for so long and I, I'm I was such an introverted person there's you know I just I was I didn't want to be myself or my authentic self because I was scared of being judged whereas now I'm just like I say it how it is and <laughs> I don't care and it's yeah, so it's, freeing yeah. eh? it's so freeing yeah. being able to speak your truth it is. And having the support yeah. by, you know, your soul tribe, your soul sisters, your soul brothers, like it's just, um, it's a really amazing feeling. Um, and I just want to touch back on, so um, with Elena, so Elena and I, um, we we got real close last year. And I'm not, not saying that we're not now, but, you know, life happens. And I think people are, we get pushed together with certain people for a reason and so um there was there was three of us so there was me um Elena and another woman and um they had they were quite um they were a bit further along on their spiritual journey whereas I was just starting to tap into my spirituality like really hard out and I honestly if it wasn't for them I don't know I don't know they there was just a magic that happened between us three and they just supported me and they accepted me and allowed me, like, you know, they see me in highs and lows and they helped me through those highs and lows and they changed my outlook on the highs and lows and made me go within. Um, the biggest thing that those two women taught me was that self-love, that unconditional love for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, isn't that being a bit, you know, um, vain or up yourself and all that kind of stuff? But no, it's not. It's not. It's There's no ego. It's mm -hmm. just loving and who you are, embracing your authenticity and allowing for these highs and lows that we go through and realize that it's normal. And um, there's, yeah, so we were pushed together in such a beautiful way. And um, that was the beginning of my soul sister journey. I would dare say last year, but the year before that is when we all started to meet and come together. Last year when, is when I like truly experienced the real feeling of that sisterhood. And I'm actually here. I'm still. I'm still not in Auckland. I haven't gone home yet. <laughs> I'm still at one of my. Sorry, back to Auckland, though. Eh? <laughs> Such a there. Um, yeah. So I'm at one of my soul sister's homes um, now, and you know she's family to me. We're not related at all, but she is bloody family. And um, I actually asked her this morning, I, and I want to read this out because um, I think it's important to, you know, that people hear this. So I asked her this morning, what is soul sister or sisterhood to you? And she said, so she's got true, honest females that you resonate with mm. that feel more like family than friend, friends, that are non judgmental when you express your opinion. Instead, when you express your opinion, it opens the discussion, not it doesn't shut it down. Mm -hmm. And so when it opens up that discussion, we don't have to agree. Yes. Like that's the thing. We don't have to agree on anything, but it's actually embracing one, one other's opinion. Maybe it's agreeing to, disagree, uh, agreeing to disagree and leaving it at that. Or it's actually, you know, when you open a discussion, instead of shutting it down, it actually expands consciousness even more. So, it, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So I want to share that <laughs> with oh, everyone. So beautiful. And, and, yeah. and it's so important too to have these other voices heard in this movement too. And again, the importance of, you know, think what I think when you think of self love, you, some people see it as being, like you said, selfish or a bit of self as well, but it's so important to love yourself because it all starts with you. If you don't love yourself and your cup is empty, you have hardly anything to give to anyone else. So you're actually be not only benefiting yourself, you're benefiting everyone else around you. Yeah, that's it. And I, um, you know, you hear like, well, if you don't love yourself, then how can anyone else love you? Yeah. Yeah. Truly exactly. for who you are. Because you've got to know who you are and truly love yourself for who you are. And that's your flaws because everyone's flawed. Nobody is perfect. Like, that's that's just the whole – I hate that word perfect anyway. Yeah. That word perfect is shit. <laughs> like, because, like, all the imperfections are what make everything authentic. Yes, and, and unique. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. So um, also I did find another quote on sisterhood. So I want to read this one out as well, if you don't mind. <laughs> so sisterhood, the relationship between sisters, a feeling of kinship with uh, kinship with and closeness to a group of women, an association or community of women linked by a common interest, religion or trade. So that's just, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, if you've got that sisterhood, it doesn't have to be in this awakening, but if you've got the sisterhood in anything else and that connection, that's a beautiful thing. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that so much. And I think, too, I, I want to touch on our relationship quickly because a lot of people may not be aware of this. Alicia and I have never met each other in person. We no. <laughs> <laughs> not once yet. And, you know, we started this um project together and we've gotten to know each other as we've had these conversations and oh and on Facebook so we were communicating on Facebook prior to this and it's just been such an honor to be on this journey with Alicia because she just wears her heart on her sleeve you're very authentic you know and you can I just feel like I can tell you anything and not feel judged and you know it's I know it's mutual there's like this mutual understanding between us and it's just been so great to to be on this journey with you because I we had I feel like we just we just click like we're yeah yeah, yeah. We're so passionate about this. We're so passionate about exposing this, but not just exposing it, educating people on what is actually happening because it is a confusing time. There's so much information out there um, yeah. and and it, it's just an overload for people and they don't know what to do. So, again, that comes back to knowing yourself, loving yourself, and that's when your moral compass opens and you're able to read and decipher things, you know, at, at that heart level because that's what yeah. we've kind of you know we we look up to all these celebrities and these idols around the world where we should be like putting ourselves up on a pedestal and honoring ourselves and you know I just before we end this episode I want to give some people touch base on some advice on how we go about showing ourselves some self-love and that self-care. So what are some rituals that you do for yourself to honour yourself? Um, So um, I think on the days that I'm feeling a bit blur. (laughs) um, And we all have those days. Yeah. yeah. Um, You know what? I shut off from the world. I shut down. Like not shut down in here, but I, I, I disconnect from everything and focus on what I want to do, what makes me feel good. Like, I'm not about like, you know, oh, I'm going to go do this because it's going to make someone else feel good if I'm not feeling good. So I've got to make sure I'm good first. So um, I, you know, shutting down, disconnecting, um, spending time in the nature. And I know this sounds cliche, but shit, man, nature is freaking good. It's good. A powerful healer. Yeah. Um, another thing that I do is um, – I either listening to <laughs> I've got a very buzzy little playlist um, so with music that I don't think it would be everyone's flavor but for me puts me at this nice calm mode I will go and have a really like I like hot showers so I'll have a hot shower but before that and I'll make sure it's at night time I will light candles so I won't have a shower with the light on it will be candle lit the steam. And the beautiful light, like, you know, from the candles that um, that you can see through, because we've got um, glass, like, so I can kind of see through it. But when it mists up, you can see the glow of the candle. Then oh. I chuck on my Bluetooth speaker and I have that music and I just, under the shower, and I just let it all just wash away, whatever it is. And then I just, you know, embrace myself. Sometimes I listen to, because um, I'm an empath, so I absorb a lot of energy so I listen to you know like loving myself letting go of everyone else's energy and embracing my own and I'm standing there I'm naked I'm I'm, you know I'm in the shower and just embracing myself and letting the water just run and I'm just being really mindful in that moment and just staying really present that's so that's um a couple of things I do because I know a lot of women don't have a lot of time for a bath Yes, to put, I, I, that kind of stuff. we don't have a yeah. bar, so if you can <laughs> pimp up your shower and make it special, why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. why not? Um, I think um, also other things that I do, um, I uh, I light my incense, I got my diffuser. Like these are the things that work for me. 
Um, and, you know, I I know that might not resonate with a lot of other people, but that's what it is all about. It's actually going inward and realizing what do I feel like doing? What yeah. makes me feel good? What makes me feel like, huh, I'm all good loving myself. So you've got to figure out, do what, you know, maybe even Google some stuff. It, it, it doesn't really matter because sometimes like, like when you Google shit, <laughs> things pop out and you're like, oh, I want to try that. Oh, I actually really enjoyed that. So, you know, it's just sort of what you've got in your toolkit. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because, and again, it's, I like quite how you said that. You could just got to find what suits you what and what works for you with what you have too. Because um, I, I do a lot of the things you do. I think grounding in nature is so important. It's so healing. You know, even just going out in the rain, you know, I like standing out in the rain sometimes. I must look crazy to my neighbours, but it's just so healing. Or just watching the rain, you know. like Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to hate the rain. Yeah, I used to hate the rain. And I used to get real grumpy when I look outside, like, oh, it's such a shit day. But now I'm like, Oh, it's moody. Yeah. I it's like it. Shifting that perspective, eh? Yeah. And it's moody, it's nice. And then I'm embracing, like, you know, how the outside looks with that mood. Mm. And um, yeah, the, the 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 rain, it's cleansing. Exactly. And then you think about all the trees and the flowers mm. that need that rain too. So yep, it, it is beautiful, like the the cycles. And I for me personally, I've gone on like the spiritual journey with um delving into like tarot and oracle cards so I like to light some essence and some candles and just you know do some divination with my card and draw from spirit and and inspiration I find that really relaxing too um and again I think it's so important for the women especially women watching this if you haven't already you know sit down with yourself and and maybe start a journal or a vision board and create where you want to where you want to be going, where you picture yourself in the future um, and also create a little ritual for yourself, even if it's like five or ten minutes a day of mm -hmm. doing this little ritual that you've come up with. It, you know, you've really got to take that time to honour yourself and and just relax and let the weight of the world come off your shoulder because as women we hold so much responsibility on our shoulder and if we take that time to again honor ourselves and decompress the day and all that energy that we pick up through the interactions we have with others you know it's a beautiful thing because you're not just honoring yourself, you're honoring everyone else around you because they're going to get this better version of yourself that isn't drained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually I will say I noticed, um, I've noticed that because I um, I take to social media quite a lot. Like I'm, I'm very vocal on there on my stories, like on TikTok and Facebook, and Instagram. That. And like I, I know, um, so when I'm feeling great, that somehow with my stories, radiates outward because I get um quite a bit of feedback from people and message me like thanks sis I really needed this today or yes I do this too and it's really like I do that unknowingly like I don't put it out there to try and be an influencer or anything like that I do it because it's just me but it actually has a roll-on effect so when you are in this good space people feel that I think too I that and how you're talking about your social media presence, that's how I was drawn to you. I, I thought, look at this chick. She's so fearless and she's so outspoken. And that's what, you know, I was doing too on my platform. And so I was like, this is, you know, we need to link up. So when Elena did, um, you know, who she went into early labor, I was like, I, who else can I get on this platform? Who else can, because I wanted to keep this conversation going. And I was like, okay, I'm going to message Alicia. And it's really worked out for the best, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah. So, so great. And I think we are both really excited about it. And we're both excited about sharing what we're doing with everyone, that it just works. It really does. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for you. So, you know, with this being the sisterhood episode, I want to just, you know, tell you how grateful I am for you and, and what you've been, you know, coming along on this journey with me. It's been so great getting to know you. Oh, it's been, it, it's been honestly so great getting to know you because I used to see your stories and, like, you know, you do your card readings on there and I'm like, oh, I resonate. Like, and, you know, just with the little conversations that we did have, like, it was very little, but I was like, this woman is just something else. And then when you messaged me um, and asked if I would like to come onto this podcast and co-host with you, 
I mean, that's something I haven't really thought of doing myself. And I thought, oh, oh, I don't know, because I, I, I got worried, like maybe I might not be the right person for this. But I thought, you know what, give it a go. And it's just connected, uh, uh, built more of a connection between us. And I just want to say that I'm really, really proud of you oh, because yeah. it takes a lot of courage to get on and do a podcast. It's okay, like, you know, I do, like, little quick two-minute two videos and that kind of thing, but this is something different. And um, you've started this platform, you started this podcast, and it's growing, and I'm just proud of you because, you know, I think you've wanted to do this for some time. And it's it, it, now it's going to be gain traction, and people, are, you're getting feedback, and this is this is awesome, and, I, yeah, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. And it it is such a great journey and we want to continue this conversation, you know, because there's so many different aspects to this great awakening too. So, you know, this episode's about the sisterhood. Next week it could be a completely different topic and that's why, you know, we want to invite everyone on this journey. There's going to be twists and turns and plot twists along the way yeah. um, and we welcome <laughs> you to this space too. So thank you all for checking in to this episode and we are so grateful for everyone who shows their support um, and, you know, and I just want to give a shout out to our brother Lucas Mack who did the last podcast episode with us. We just watching it back I just get so inspired you know yeah. he's such a great speaker and I think me and Alicia both walked away from that thinking we want to be at his level we want to be oh, able yeah. to speak like him yeah. he's such an amazing guy and yeah like yeah. I said there's been the sisterhood and brotherhood that has happened during this whole journey so thanks again to everyone for checking in we hope you have a great one Kakite. bye